गुड आफ्टरनून लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वेलकम टू टेक एक वेबिनार सीरीज आर एंडिवियर टू एम्पावर टेक इज we believe that sharing of knowledge is the key to enhance our skill and grow us as professionals with this principle in mind we have initiated a series of webinars conducted by industry experts to give you all a crisp insight of various domains the topic of today's session is no sql thinking beyond rdbms our guest speaker today is mr ashish shrivastav java technology specialist savian global markets Ashish has overall 8 years of experience in architecting, designing and building enterprise class scalable distributed systems. His current role involves evolving companies technology capabilities and mapping business cases with Sapient Global Markets, a division of Sapient. His prime focus is on building large scale layer driven applications leveraging emerging technologies in no SQL space. So without further delay I introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you Mr. Ashish. uh thank you shweta hello and good afternoon everyone uh, i will be giving a brief intro starting on our agenda so this is our agenda we will be talking about in this webinar it's it's divided into two section first is the no sql movement and second one is our building blocks now second section is uh, more towards uh, answering how no sql is different technically and section 1 argues the evolution of our uh, no sql database so let let let's start uh, by building a context around what is no sql uh, so uh, first of all uh, no sql expands to not only sql is used today as an umbrella term for all databases and data stores that don't follow the popular and well established rdms principles NoSQL is not a single product or even a single technology. It represents a class of products and a collection of diverse and sometimes related concepts about data storage and manipulation. So let's begin with this background about uh, or on the NoSQL movement concept. So we will talk about in the first section uh, the motives and the main drivers, criticism and the reaction. would no sql data structure and then we will talk about in this section the classification and comparison within no sql space as well as comparing that to an uh, rdbms uh, stores now we start obviously uh, when we talk about no sql this term picked up in 2009 and used by advocates of non relational databases now the whole point of seeking alternatives is that we need to solve a problem that relational databases are, are a bad fit for now one of the obvious we see is as a transaction slow join slow distributed computing not a design consideration but there are some more to follow now we'll we'll go one by one for the list in the list so the second is horizontal scalability and running on commodity hardware in contrast to rdbms most no sql databases are designed to scale well in the horizontal direction and not rely on highly available hardware machines can be added and removed without causing the same operational efforts to perform sharding in rdbms cluster solution rdbms vendor like oracle can tell us right degree of hardware and right configuration but at what cost so that is one of the criteria uh, for the, that is one of the motivation now coming to the uh, second important point is avoidance of ex expensive object relational mapping most of the no sql databases are designed to store data structures that are simple now this is particularly important for application with data structures of low complexity that can hardly benefit from the features of relational databases relational databases gives us too much they force us to push our object data to fit into an rdbms now we move on to a to our another point which is the current size Its all database thinking was was and is wrong. 
Now, uh, a growing number of application scenarios cannot be addressed with a traditional database approaches. Now, alternative towards RDBMS can be explained by two major trends. Uh, you know, uh, or one is the continuous growth of data volume, and B, the growing need to process larger amount of data in shorter time. This, uh, another one, the RDBMS plus caching layer pattern workaround was a system built from scratch. Now, uh, the system built with a scalability in mind. In a relational database dominated world, scalability was an issue of leveraging MySQL and Memcached. Now, by the time we have implemented a Memcached, replicated, shredded database architecture, there is not much of the relational database left. Not only have the salient and most desirable features of the RDBMS been lost, but we have also created a maintenance nightmare. Now, moving on to the last point, which is yesterday's versus today's need. Regarding data storage have considerably changed over time. So earlier databases have been designed for a single large high-end machines. Today, data is neither digitally structured nor a dynamic query is needed, as most applications already use prepared statements or stored procedures. Therefore, it is sufficient to predefine queries within the databases. We'll try to understand more closely about uh, NoSQL and, 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 and the use case requirement where these fit in. So let's first understand that NoSQL is a next generation databases, mostly addressing some of the points being non-relational, distributed, open source, and horizontal scalable. Uh, even more characteristic applies, uh, such as schema-free, easy application support, simple API, eventually consistent base. Now, base is uh, it's basically available soft state eventual consistency, and soft state refers to the behavior the data is written to memory instead of disk, and it's an optional asset, a huge amount of data and more. We'll have a comparison of acid and base properties in our second section, which, which, which deals more technically into it. Now, some of the key NoSQL uh, players are, we can see in the list, uh, Oracle is included. Here only to illustrate that even the relational database giant has realized the importance of NoSQL. Oracle necessary, uh, is not necessary as influential as others. Now, now what kind of use cases are well suited for a NoSQL data store? Now, consider a subset of enterprise applications. Now, all of these require real-time operational data. Some of the cases which, which we can think of on these real-time data uh, uh, random read and write, real-time, low predictable latency, working set often less than total data set. Now the NoSQL uh, best fit in some of the best case, some of the cases like uh, operational data cases we have been to maintain a persistent cache real-time data collection analysis, shared data platform, last scale out and pass. Moving uh, slowly uh, towards our criticism and reaction around NoSQL space. Now, NoSQL, uh, as a high number of critics uh, quoted this, so this is a general saying towards new technology. Uh, actually, companies do not miss anything if they do not switch to NoSQL databases. And if RDBMS does its job, there is no reason to replace it. Second criticism was NoSQL as being nothing new. Yes, most of the DBs use the same backend like D plus three, you know, DB. No, but, but the argument was uh, the big change is how we interact with it and obviously how data is organized. NoSQL meant as, as a total no to SQL. No, it is nothing, it has nothing to do with SQL. The term has to convey the assumption that SQL and ACID are not the only tools to solve our problem, such as end of master scale scheme, end of giving the relational model through our application code. We can also see this as a post relational instead of NoSQL. So we are seeing an explosion in ideas how to store important data. Requirement of administrator and operators, yes. So NoSQL debate is dominated by developers view like performance, ease of use, schemaless, nice API, whereas the need of 
operations people and system administrators to adopt data fixing, adopt data querying or forgetting in this side. We'll see some of those uh, query models in our in our second technical section that we can plug in uh, other layer on top of these NoSQLs. Now the fifth point, uh, fifth critics is NoSQL is just about scalability and the performance. Now NoSQL data store can be made obsolete by making RDBMS faster and more scalable. Now there's an argument that there is a lot more to NoSQL than just performance and scaling. And that for example, NoSQL DB often provide better substrate for modeling business domain. I can do NoSQL just as well in a relational database. Although it is possible to cube and tune a relational database, this does not make sense for all types of data. Different applications are good for different things. The relational database are great for relational data but why we want to use them for non-relational data. So these are, these are a minimal list of criticism and reaction which is going around in the NoSQL community. And I have jotted down some of those points. Now moving next, we quickly like to visit what our NoSQL data structures are. And uh, then we classify later on into these buckets where each, and where each of these uh, NoSQL vendors fit into. Now the key value store have a simple data model in common, a map or a dictionary allowing clients to put and request values per key. Beside the data model and the API, modern key values stores favor high scalability over consistency. And therefore, most of them also emit rich ad hoc querying and analytics feature, especially join and aggregate the operations are set aside. Now, key value stores have existed for a long time, example, uh, Berkeley DB. But a large number of this class of NoSQL store that has emerged has been heavily influenced by Amazon Dynamo. Next in class, we will visit a column-oriented data store. These are advanced key value, unlimited number of columns. Columns can be grouped, values can be timestamps. Example includes uh, Apache Cassandra. Uh, third, we move on to a document kind of a store where the next logical step from a simple key value store to a more complex and a meaningful data structure as they at least allow to encapsulate key value pair in documents. Document store databases are particularly useful for dynamic languages. Their feature allow them to easily replace traditional relation stores if asset is not important. Example include MongoDB. Now, last uh, kind of a data structure which we will be discussing is about graph. Now, based on graph theory, object as nodes, relationships as edges, easy to map objects. Now, example includes Neo4j, PlotDB, etc. So, we will we'll see these uh, classifications more going ahead and we'll map the uh, vendors, uh, NoSQL data stores into these buckets. Now, I will talking about the classification segment. Now, there are many sets of classification uh, these stores go into. So the first cl classification is primarily based on our data model. Now, we have a mapping category of key value store, then we have a lot of matching databases around, then we have document store, we have a lot of matching databases around, extensible record set uh, which involve our columnar stores, Big table, HBase, hyper table, Cassandra, and more. Now there are another category which can be thought of uh, based on customer need, the uh, down table, where uh, it is categorized on feature first. So now feature first a class of database provides a large number of high level features that makes the programmer job easier. On the downside, they're difficult to scale. For example, include all our relational databases and uh, Second category is scale first, which is this this sort of databases has to scale from the start. On the downside, they lack particular features and put responsibility back to the programmer. Now, an example include Project Voldemort, Hypertable, Cassandra, CausDB, MemcacheDB. Third kind of a categorization which can be done based on a storage uh, structure, uh, which is uh, assumes key value store with an emphasis on storing and retrieving 
set of arbitrary structures. The downside is that they generally don't have the features or the scalability of other systems. Example include file system, Cassandra, Berkeley DB, Amazon, Simple DB. Fourth kind of categorization which can be made is purpose oriented, uh, purpose optimized storage, uh, which is these are databases which are designed and built to be good at one thing. Example, data warehousing or stream processing. Example of such databases are Streambase, Vertica, VoltDB, GreenPlum, and whatnot. Now, this categorization is useful to match a given use case to a class of database. Though the categorization is not complete, as example, graph databases are missing, and it is not clear how they would fit into the categories mentioned above. Furthermore, it is important to notice that some database can be found in different classes. For example, Cassandra and SimpleDB. So the categorization does not provide a sharp distinction when each database only fits into one class. Now, we see a kind of a classification with a comparison of all these uh, uh, kind of a data uh, structures, key value column, document graph, and comparing that to a relational uh, in terms of performance, scalability, flexibility, complexity, and functionality. Now, we can clearly see that uh, graph databases are highly complex and uh, highly flexible. And the relational databases are low in flexibility, but they're moderate in complexity. But when we talk in terms of performance, we can see that key value, column, and document are very high in terms of performance and scalability. So this kind of a short comparison and classification which we, which we can build and talk. Now this, this uh, the paper list uh, shows the number of vendors which are playing in different categories of key value, uh, column store, uh, graph databases. So there are around 122 plus NoSQL uh, data stores. Um, most of them are open source and some are vendor proprietary. So I just want to give that glimpse out. This roughly brings an end to our uh, section one, which uh, talks about evolution of uh, NoSQL store, talks about uh, the motives and the main drivers behind it, why we need it. We now look technically at uh, how these features are embedded into a NoSQL store. So we see, we see the building blocks and uh, most of these NoSQL store adhere to these kind of uh, thought process related to consistency, partitioning, storage layout, or a query model. So let's, let's, let's begin and this, is, this might be too technical for some people and might be easy for some. So now we'll start first of all by building a concept around a gap theorem which is coined by Eric Brewer in 2000 and which is widely adopted today. The theorem states that within a large scale distributed data system there are three requirements that have a relationship of sliding dependency, consistency, availability and partition tolerance. Now consistency uh, means that all database clients will read the same value of the same query even in case of concurrent updates. Or, or we can say that all nodes see the same data in the same time. So availability and especially high availability meaning that a system is designed and implemented in a way that allows it to continue operations read and write in case of a node crash or some hardware or software part down due to upgrade. Now coming to third with this partition tolerance the database can split into multiple machines. It can continue functioning in the face of network segmentation breaks. It also understood as the ability of a system to cope with the dynamic addition and removal of nodes. Now, one can at most choose two of these characteristics in a shared data system. So these, these three circles are trying to uh, depict that they are not intersecting uh, altogether. So it's intersection of consistency, availability, availability and partition tolerance and consistency and partition tolerance. For this, this triangle trying to tell us that what are the sequences, what are the stores are in which area. So we have a combination of consistency and availability in relational databases, a combination of consistency and partition tolerance 
in case of Google, say Google Pixel and Dutch, Derivative, MongoDB, and etc. Same goes with availability and partition tolerance. We'll see more uh, combination and more traits in our next slide. Now, uh, this is a kind of chart which depicts that how will you, how will, how will us, how will trace it out if a system is, a, is in a distributed environment. So when a system says CA, consistency and availability, means that we are likely using two-phase commit for a distributed transaction. It means that system will block when a network partition occurs. So it may be that system is limited to a single data center cluster in an attempt to mitigate. Now coming to second combination which is CP and uh, to primarily support consistency and partition tolerance, we may try to advance our architecture by setting up data shards in order to scale. Our data will be consistent but we still run the risk of some data becoming unavailable if no scale. Coming to AP, which is to primarily support availability and partition tolerance, our system may return inaccurate data, but system will always be available. Now, even in the face of network partition. So, this 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 table is trying to do that. Now, coming to our uh, important comparison between acid and base. Now, base uh, forfeits the asset properties of consistency. Those who are working on RDBMS system, they are quite familiar with the asset properties of consistency and isolation. So base favors availability, graceful degradation and performance. So, so, it's, so it's a trade-off between asset and a base systems and proposes a decision criteria to select one or the other for individual use cases. If a system or part of a system have to be consistent and partition tolerant, Asset properties are required. So um, I will I will repeat again. If a system or part of a system have to be consistent and partition tolerant, asset properties are required, as we see in the triangle. And if availability and partition tolerance are favored over consistency, the resulting system can be characterized by the base properties. Now Google Big Table chooses neither asset nor base, but the third cap alternative, being consistent and available system and consequently not be able to fully operate in presence of uh, network partitions. So a bit on uh, strict consistency and uh, eventual uh, consistency. So strict consistency means all the operations must return data from the latest computer write operations regardless of which replica the operation went to. Such a strict uh, consistency cannot be achieved together with availability and partitional tolerance according to CAP theorem. So we can choose only two. Now coming to our second point of eventual consistency means the reader will see writes as time goes on in a steady state. The system will eventually return the last written value. Clients therefore may face an inconsistent state of data as updates are in progress. For instance in a replicated database updates may go to one node which replicates the latest version to all other nodes that contain a replica of the modified database, uh, of the modified data set. So that replica nodes eventually will have the latest uh, version. So this is how eventual uh, consistency can be conceptualized. Now we move, we move on another interesting concept of versioning of a data set in a distributed scenario. Now this is fairly important because if data set is distributed among nodes, they can be read and altered on each node. And no strict consistency is ensured by a distribution transaction protocol. Question arise on how concurrent modification and versions are processed and to which value a data set will eventually converse to. There are several options to handle these issues. Uh, obvious ones are timestamps and optimistic locking. Now timestamps rely on synchronized clocks and do not capture casualty. Uh, uh, some of the NoSQL store example Cassandra uses timestamp at the column family level to determine the most recent value when doing rate request. Optimistic locking uh, does not work well in a distributed and dynamic scenarios where servers show up and go away, often and without prior notice. So optimistic locking is used by database system like Google App Engine, MySQL, as a DBMS which only implement optimistic locking. 
recommend a layer outfit the database uh, like uh, Ruby on Rails, Cybernet, Microsoft Entity Frameworks. So these supports uh, optimistic blocking, but there are others like vector clocks. Now vector clocks are an alternative approach to capture order and allow reasoning between updates in a distributed system. A vector clock is a list of nodes count pair. Every version of every object is associated with one vector clock. Now if, if the counter on the first object clock are less than or equal to all of the nodes in the second clock, then second is the latest updated record. So example uh, for, from the NoSQL store, uh, Amazon Dynamo and React, which are using uh, vector clock kind of a, a versioning. Third is multi-version uh, storage, uh, which means to store a timestamp for each tail cell. These timestamps do not necessarily need to correspond to a real life, but can also be some artificial value that can be brought into a definite order. For a given row, multiple uh, multiple versions can exist concurrently. Now, example of uh, multi-version storage are uh, Apache HBase, CouchDB no, from NoSQL world. Even uh, MySQL when used with NoDB and Sybase and uh, Oracle uh, provide multi-version storage. Now partitioning. So we we have uh, seen that uh, assuming the data in a large scale system exceed the capacity of a single machine and should also be replicated to ensure reliability and allow scaling measures such as load balancing. Ways of partitioning the data of such a system have to be thought about. Depending on the size of the system and other factors like dynamism, there are different approaches to this issue. So when I, when I, when I, when I say dynamism, it means that how open and dynamically storage nodes may, may join and leave in a, in, in a, in a distributed environment. We'll see, we'll see a, an example ahead uh, to visualize these effects. Now, uh, so, so, so the first one is the memory caches. Um, second is clustering. So, the in in case of uh, clustering, uh, client uh, should not notice uh, talking to a cluster of a database server instead of a single server. So, um, clustering features have only been added on top of RDBMS that were not originally designed for distribution. This is what. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of, lot of critics is going around. Now, third approach is separating reads from write. Now, this is a master slave kind of an agreement and uh, the replication of data can happen either by a transfer of state or by transfer of operations which are applied to the state on the slaves nodes and have to arrive in the correct order. Now, but we have to be cautioned around master slave but we have to be cautioned about uh, master slave scaling features. And uh, master slave uh, failures, uh, I mean. Now, sharding is another concept which means to partition the data in such a way that data typically requested and updated together resides on the same node and that load and storage volume is roughly evenly distributed among the server. So with, with sharding, we lose all the features that make the RDBMS useful. And that sharding is operationally obnoxious. This valuation refers to the fact that sharding was not originally designed within current RDBMS, but rather added on top. In contrast, many NoSQL databases have embraced sharding as a key feature and some even provide automatic partitioning and balancing of data among nodes, example uh, MongoDB. Now we look around uh, one another concept of consistent hashing. Uh, this is important because the downside in a distributed uh, environment of shredding is that at least part of the data have to be redistributed whenever a node leaves and joins. So in, in a memory caching scenario, like uh, uh, the first case of partitioning, uh, data redistribution may happen implicitly by absorbing cache misses, reaching data again from database or backend system, hashing it against the currently available cache server. But for a persistent uh, data store, this implicit redistribution process is not acceptable as data not present on the available, available node 
cannot be reconstructed. So we'll we'll see to visualize this this thing. Now, uh, so we we are saying in consistent hashing, uh, we are hashing not only hashing object but also machine has the advantage. So we'll 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 briefly visualize how this is happening. So there are three red color nodes A, B, and C, and four blue colored objects. Uh, that are mapped to a hash function. Result range uh, to a hash function result range, which is imagined and pictured as a ring. So we can we can see that now which object is mapped to which object is determined by moving clockwise around the ring. So object four and one are mapped to node A, object two to node B, and object three to node C. Now when a node leaves the system, the cache object will get mapped to the adjacent node. In a clockwise direction. So I'm just taking a, I'm just I'm just taking a scenario that I'm mapping all the nodes in the clockwise direction. There are uh, specific algorithms specific to different NoSQL data stores which map it differently, but the concept remains same. Now, and when a node enters the system, it will get hashed onto the ring and will overtake object. Now let's see. So node C and uh, node C left and node D entered the system. So that that's now object 3 and 4 will get mapped to node B. This shows that by changing the number of nodes, not all objects have to be remapped to the new set of nodes, but only part of the objects. Now, we'll see about uh, membership changes as we are discussing about node joining in and uh, going out of the ring. So in a partition database where nodes may join and leave the system at any point at, uh, without impacting its operations, all nodes have to communicate with each other, especially when member membership changes uh, changes are happening. So let's let's see, let's again visualize the same scenario. Uh, uh, we see that node X joins a system for which a replication factor of 3 is configured. Now it is hashed between A and B. So that the nodes H, A, B transfer data to the new node X. And after that node, B, C, and D can drop part of their data for which node X is now responsible as a third replica. In addition to node H, A, and B. In a similar fashion, when a node leaves the system, the following action will occur. So the action to be taken when node B due to crash leaves the system. Node C, D, and E become responsible for new intervals of hashed object and therefore have to copy data from nodes in counterclockwise direction and also recognize their internal representation of the intervals as the range A, B and range B, C now collapse to range A, C. Moving ahead on uh, storage layouts, uh, where we will see an uh, overview of storage layout which determined how the disk is accessed and therefore directly implicate uh, performance in case of a, a database. Now, we, the first kind of a storage layout is a row based storage layout. Uh, means that the table of a relational model gets serialized as its lines are appended in plus two disk. Now the advantage of this storage layout are that at first whole data set can be read and written in a single I.O. operation and uh, secondly one has a good locality of access of different columns. Now on the downside uh, operating on column is expensive as a considerable amount of data has to be read. So example include uh, MySQL and PostgreSQL. We have a row based uh, storage layout system. Moving to our uh, second is columnar storage layout which talks about uh, serializable tables by appending their columns and flushing them to disk. Therefore operations on columns are fast and cheap while operations on rows are costly and can lead to seek in a lot or all of the columns. 
A typical application field for this type of storage layout is analytics, where an efficient examination of columns for statistical purposes is important. Example in group KDB, SAP HANA, Microsoft SQL Server 2012, Enterprise Edition. Now, a third kind of uh, columnar storage layout with locality group is similar to column based storage but adds the feature of defining uh, locality groups that are a group of columns expected to be accessed together by clients. The columns of such a group may therefore be stored together and physically separated from other columns and column groups. Example include Apache, etc. Now these, these, these are important as, as I have mentioned previously that they will directly implicate uh, the performance. Now we will quickly uh, run through the query models uh, which, which is, uh, they, there are substantial differences in the querying capabilities with, between the different NoSQL uh, uh, database data source. Now key value store by design often only provide a lookup by primary key. Document databases, PouchDB and MongoDB allow for complex querying. Uh, some column family stores like uh, Cassandra offer range query. So this is this is not surprising, uh, as in the design of many NoSQL databases, rich dynamic querying features have been omitted in favor of performance and scalability. Uh, on the on the other hand, also when using uh, NoSQL databases, uh, there are use cases requiring at least some query feature for non-primary key attributes. So we'll, we'll see uh, some of those uh, workarounds which we can do. Uh, and so, so two kind of models is listed. So one is uh, companion model uh, is an approach in which uh, searchable attributes are copied to a SQL or a text database. The query capabilities of this database are used to retrieve the primary keys of matching data set of which the NoSQL database will subsequently be accessed. Second uh, kind of model is uh, scatter and gather local search which can use the NoSQL so allows querying and indexing within database server nodes. If this is a case, a query processor can dispatch queries to the database nodes where the query is executed locally. The result from all database servers is sent back to the query processors for post processing them, uh, like uh, aggregation and returning the result to a client that he showed the query. So, we see um, as we are uh, ending it now, uh, the final comments. Now, each NoSQL database has its own strength and weaknesses. Analysis of uh, system requirement is therefore crucial to ensure that the NoSQL database and uh, unlisted can be a good fit. So, NoSQL is typically good for unstructured schema-less data. Usually, we don't need to explicitly define our schema upfront and can just include new fields without any issues. Now, NoSQL typically favors a denormalized schema due to no support for joins for the RDBMS world. We would usually have a flattened denormalized representation of our data. Using NoSQL does not mean uh, we lose data. Different DBs have different strategies, for example, uh, MongoDB can essentially choose what level to trade off uh, between performance and potential uh, data loss. So it's, 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 very, uh, it's, it's very often uh, to, very easy to scale out NoSQL search and adding more nodes to replicate data, offer more scalability and also offer more protection against data losses if one node goes down. But again, again, uh, depends on NoSQL DB configuration and the kind of uh, vendor we are used to. So, uh, it's, it's, so relational databases are no longer a default choice and uh, flexible data of NoSQL can speed up our, our development. So, that 
brings to an end of our session. I hope uh, the technical part uh, was somewhat uh, understanding. So these are the references. You can do any or show with us. Thanks for the insightful presentation. Uh, let's quickly take up the questions now. Uh, please read out the questions, Mr. Rashish, and their answers so that all our users may listen to the commendable insights. So I got question in. Okay, I've got good number of questions. So let's let's start uh, by answering uh, one by one. Now, Most of them, I guess, has already been answered on the menu presentation. What is the difference between the RDBMS clustering and the NoSQL uh, DB clustering? Okay, so uh, what is the difference between the RDBMS clustering and the NoSQL DB clustering? I okay, the clustering part is not making any difference, but the selling part of NoSQL is uh, is the sharding capabilities, which is uh, more enhanced. And clustering is more added as a layer extra on top of RDBMS. It was not built for, uh, it's, it's not built considering that design. Now, so interfaces like uh, Java.sql and JavaX.sql we used for uh, NoSQL. Now, each NoSQL engine provides its own access of API. These APIs are not uniformed and absolutely not based on Java.SQL and JavaX.SQL. So there is one interesting question on NoSQL and uh, Data Warehouse. Now the, the only concept they share is that uh, they, the NoSQL and Data Warehouse are both used to analyze large amount of data now, data warehouse systems typically have reporting abilities in SQL, which allow us to access all data in a standard way. NoSQL solutions manage relatively limited schema with large cardinality. So, that was one. Now, how good is a mix match of relation and NoSQL use cases? Yeah, so there's, 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 a, there's an interesting debate, uh, which is called polygot uh, persistence, which have uh, uh, RDBMS and um, uh, on top and then we have NoSQL in the back end. So we, we can uh, go for uh, a mix and match but before that we need to analyze the requirement, create a proof of concept. Okay. I did not understand this how clouding and NoSQL work together. So clouding, uh, does this mean cloud computing? Yes, definitely if that this clouding uh, is referred to uh, a cloud computation thing. So one of the motives uh, driver for NoSQL is, is uh, is the is, is 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 the cloud? Yeah. So there are a lot of benchmarking which has been uh, done 
on uh, comparing different kind of uh, no sql uh, databases uh, and it's highly available on uh, internet even amazon has put the source material which guide us on those details one uh, overall glimpse i have shown in one of the tables which compares uh, uh, all, all, all no sql data stores with relational db Okay, so there's one more interesting question which says uh, why C in why C in cap term not same as C in acid. Now both C stands for consistency, but the notion of uh, consistency in cap means that all load see the same data at the same time, and no notion of consistency in acid means that any transaction the database perform will take it from uh, one consistent state to another. Now, um, that was one. I guess this brings to an end. Yes. There was one question why we go for NoSQL not to SQL Server or Oracle. Uh, this presentation was all about informing that we have a main motivation so that background is built in and uh, uh, I've already I've concluded that relation database you have to analyze a requirement and if it's uh, creating, creating a proof of concept and relation database are no longer default choice, there are a lot of other uh, uh, kind of a data unstructured, unnormalized uh, schema, schema list. So when when a development starts, we don't have to fix our, uh, um, our our schema beforehand. So it's it's about differentiating between performance, scalability, uh, functionality, and uh, and and optimizing all of them. What tools are used to design NoSQL DB? Okay, so the, these are, uh, uh, it's, it's not a relational kind of a tool where you can design your databases. You have to model it. Now, like in kind of a case of a key value pair, the, the modeling uh, happen has to be based on the use case, what you're trying to address. For example, uh, classic uh, uh, data modeling in case of Cassandra, will be a time series application uh, where you have uh, a lot of financial prices coming in or we need to monitor or uh, uh, log activities into an uh, on, uh, from an IP address so and at what time so you need to build a build that kind of a perspective of thinking around using NoSQL databases I guess I've answered all of the questions. There was this one scenario, I don't know, uh, in a product. Yes, Shruta. So I'm done with all the questions. Thank you very much. I'm really thankful to Mr. Rashish for conducting this webinar. It was indeed a great session. I would also like to thank all our participants for their support in making this webinar a success. 
The recording of the webinar will be available on tegek.com by tomorrow. Thank you all.